All right, 1.6, piecewise functions. All right, let's go through this. A function defined by using two or more rules on two or more intervals is called a piecewise function. A piecewise function, the graph of them, okay, is made up of two or more pieces of similar or different functions. And here's some examples. This is something you saw when you were in grade 9. This is your general broken line graph, okay, where you connected a bunch of different lines to create this. Another one is, this is what you'll be more familiar with in this course, where you combine different functions to make one large function. How do you know it's a function? Well, it passes the vertical line test. So this entire thing is a piecewise function composed of four different functions. All right, so let's move forwards. Example one, you're asked to graph the piecewise function f at x is equal to, and then the following, x squared minus one, if x is less than or equal to negative one, three x plus three, if x is between negative one and one, and finally negative x squared plus one, if x is greater than one. What do we do here? Well, a couple of things you have to remember. Every graph you do needs to have at least five points. So we're going to need at least five points. In piecewise functions, the important features are going to be all the end points, where you would put an open or closed circle. And finally, within each of these graphs, each of these functions, I recommend that you have at least two points within these so that what happens is that at least two points so that you have to connect the function. Note here, this one will represent a curve. This one will represent a line, and this one would represent another curve. Both the first and the last one both represent parabolas. The difference between them is that one is a parabola that, open up, that opens upwards, because the sign is positive right here, and the last one here is a parabola that opens downwards because there's a negative right here. So this is something to note when we draw this. In the meantime, let's draw it. What points do we pick? Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, we need the vertex, let's do the quadratic. You don't need those points in this question because remember, we're only looking at specific intervals. This is the restricted domain. I only want this section of this parabola. I only want this section of this line and again this section of this parabola. So we have to graph this. How do we do that? Well, put a table for the first equation and you know that it's got to end at negative 1. So we need the numbers, any number from negative infinity to negative 1. Any number less than or equal to negative 1. We need the negative 1 because it's an end point. It's either going to be closed or open. We'll look at that in a second. And we need another number before negative 1. So we'll just pick one really close. And a close one will be at negative 2. What do we do now? We graph this, folks. So we want to graph this. We can't graph it yet till we find the y value. So we need to plug in negative 2 for x into the equation to find our y value. And lo and behold, we get 0 for negative 1, 0, and then we also get negative 2, 3. What does that mean? Well, notice there's a little red dot right here. What does that red dot mean? Well, that red dot that's here means that there must be a closed circle at negative 1 because it's less than or equal to negative 1. That's important. So we put this dot here to remind ourselves that we want a closed circle at this point. This one is just going to be a point on the graph that we need to do, and it connects so that we can draw a curve. All right, next one. We want the points negative 1, obviously, and then we want also not only just negative 1, we also want 1. So we need to graph this, all right? So, we need negative 1, and we need 1, and we pick another point. Why did I pick 0? Well, guys, 0 will give us our y-intercept. The y-intercept is usually a point 
on every graph that should be graphed, especially if you're drawing the y-axis. It gives us a center point. It gives us a point that's an important feature of every graph, the one of the intercepts. So, plug in the equation for those x values, and we get negative 1, 0. Now keep in mind, for this one up here, this negative 1 is open. So we need to put an open dot at negative 1, 0, and then again, a closed dot at 1, 6. So you need to open and close. Finally, let's go to the last one. Create that table, put the equation. Obviously, we're going to pick one as one of the points, and we pick another point. Two, and we need an open circle at one, zero, and then we're going to continue the graph. All right. So those are the important points. We put closed dots and open dots at where we're going to draw those on the graph, just to remind us. It's not a, necess it's not a necessary component, but it definitely is something that it will remind you that you need to graph that. So on to the graph paper. Here's our graph paper. You need to make sure that your graph is covers this entire thing. Not some dinky little section right here in the whole graph where you have everything else blank. That's not going to work, folks. You need to cover at least 75% of the graph. And you're highly urged to remember to do this because as you go on to university, you have to make sure that you ask your profs about this stuff. How, how big do you want the graphs? So I'm going to rewrite that whole table here. So it's written in a tiny little corner to remind us of all the points. You have them on your paper. I need to see these. So I'm going to graph these. All right, using different scales along the x and the y axis. Now let's talk about those points before we go on. Keep in mind, notice the scale I used on the y axis is not the same as the scale used on the x axis. You do not need the same scale in both axes. You do need the same scale when you're on the same axes on both the top and the bottom. I've seen kids give me wrong ones. Also, if you're going to label every second one, you need to label every second one. Be consistent. Okay, we're going to graph the points. Negative 2, 3 is located here. Negative 1, 0 is located here. We put a closed dot at negative 1, 0 because in our chart down here, if you look here in our chart, we know there needs to be a closed dot and we stop here for this function. What are we going to draw? Are we going to connect these dots with a straight line or are we going to dress, connect them with a curve? The answer to that is we want to connect them with a curve. That curve will open upwards because this is a parabola. This equation down here is a parabola that opens upwards. Remember we talked about that. So here I'm going to connect the dots in such a way that it resembles part of a parabola. We don't know if that's a vertex. In fact, we don't care. Um, 0, negative 1, by the way, would be the vertex. But we want to just sketch this curve. So look here. We sketch the curve going across here and should be no problem. All right. Next thing is we're going to put at negative 1, 0, right here, negative 1, 0, we're going to put an open circle. Well, look. Negative one zero already has a closed circle. So who takes the rule? Is it the closed circle is more important or the open circle? And folks, that means the closed circle stays closed. An open can become closed, but a closed cannot become open. So it's an open circle on top of a closed circle. So this is actually closed at this point. And then we're going to plot 0, 3 right there and 1, 6 up there. What do we connect those dots with? Well, we connect it with a straight line, folks. We connect it with a straight line because the equation here, right here in the table, is actually a line. All right. Next, we need to plot the next point. Next point is going to be at... 1, 0, and notice it's going to be open. Don't forget, we wrote that in the chart. It's 
going to be open. One zero, it's going to be open. So one zero has an open circle. And then two negative three is just a point on the curve. It's not open, it's just a closed point on that curve, folks. Okay, just really closed, that's all. And then what we're going to do is draw a curve. We're going to connect the open circle to the closed circle with the curve. What kind of curve? A curve that has a parabola which opens downwards because this is a parabola that opens downwards. So we draw our curve and there it is opening downwards. So this folks is our function. Moving from left to right it passes the vertical line test. This is our function with three pieces. Now let's move on to the second part of this question. Yes, second part. Example number two says, referring to example one, which points would you use to determine if a piecewise function is continuous or not? Well, the answer to that is you would look at the end points. Every single point in the equation is important, but specifically the end points of each part, each piece of the piecewise function. So, when we go back to the original piecewise, you would test the points negative 1, which is here and here, to see that these points, does the function continue here? And then again, we would test it at 1, because we need to see, is the function continuous here? So looking at the graph, we would test it, we would put it in the table, and we can see that at negative 1 right here, negative 1, it is continuous. The reason why is moving towards the point from the left side and moving towards the point from the right side will equal the same value. So they are moving both in the same direction, pointing directly to this point. So here the graph is continuous. Let's move to the other questionable point. At 1 we have two different values. We have one here, a solid dot, and another open dot here. This means that this graph will jump. You have to lift your pencil up. As soon as you have to lift your pencil up, it is no longer continuous because we have to jump. So this is a point of discontinuity. The reason why is if we move from the left side, it's going towards this point. Moving from the right side, it's going towards this point. So you see that you're having different values depending on which direction you're coming from. So there is a point of discontinuity. The question in the last part asks you which points would you test and those are the two values. Alright folks, that's the end of the video. Take care. Have a good night.